Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on the cup, C-U-P, just like a, you know, a cup you drink from. So get out your King James Bible, turn it to the first book, which is Genesis, and we'll get started here. All right. In the Bible, usually, well, it works for the King James. It doesn't work for the new modern Bibles because they've changed everything. But usually the first time that a word appears in Scripture, if you read the context, it usually gives you an idea of the theme of what the word is used for. Now, cup sometimes means an actual cup that you drink from. Other times, it's a figure of speech, as we will soon find out. So let's go to Genesis chapter 40. This is the first mention. Some people call it the law of first mention. All right, Genesis chapter 40, the story of Joseph in prison. And if you want to read a story about Bible forgiveness, read the story of the life of Joseph. You know, the coat of many colors when he went to Egypt, how he became, uh, well, I think third in command, second or third in command in Egypt. Um, you know, instead of reading The Shack, which is written by an antichrist, I don't know why people like Kent Hovind, uh, used to have a lot of respect for Kent. I, I don't know what they did to him in prison, but... He's not the same anymore. But um, why would you want to read a story written by an antichrist and then have Christian people fawning over a book that an antichrist wrote? I don't think so. You know, if you want to read about forgiveness, read the story and life of Joseph. That's forgiveness, people. All right, Genesis chapter 40, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth, wroth, angry. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. So what's a season? Um, basically, what's a season? You got spring, summer, fall, winter, right? So they were in there a couple months. So, Verse 5. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the king and, uh, I'm sorry, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpretation of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. Now, what's, what's you know, when, usually when the Bible talks about a vine, it's talking about grapes, right? Because that's what grapes are. Verse 10. And in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. 
And I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup, Pharaoh's cup, into his hand in the former manner when thou wast his butler. Uh, let's see. And you can read the rest if you want on your own. The story of Joseph is really excellent. So, all right. So, sometimes a cup means something you drink from, and other times it has other meanings. So, a the butler would have the cup of the king and reason being he would make sure that nobody poisoned the cup and sometimes the king would have the butler drink from the cup to make sure that it wasn't poisoned so when somebody was said that they're the cup bearer for the king or in Egypt's case to Pharaoh it was very important Now, according to history, the uh, pharaoh in Egypt at this particular time of Joseph was the, uh, I believe I'm pronouncing it right, the Hyskos, H-Y-S-K-O-S, -S, could be two S's, H-Y-S-S-K-O-S. -S they were Semitic cousins to the Hebrews, and they rolled into Egypt one day, a great army, and they took over Egypt. And eventually, uh, Egypt overthrew them. So, when you read about Joseph marrying the, uh, the high priest of Egypt, they were not Egyptians. The Hiscos were, uh, like I say, they were Semitic cousins to the Hebrews, and they conquered Egypt. So even though they were called Pharaoh, they were not the native people of the Egyptians. They were driven out later. I don't know how many years later, but um, yeah, so they, they conquered Egypt. So, all right, let's keep going. Now here's an interesting story in 2 Samuel chapter 12, starting in verse 1. little background. Um... Uriah, who's called the a Hittite, I don't know if he was an actual Hittite or if he just lived in the land of the Hittites, you know, just because um, somebody, Ruth was called a Moabite, that doesn't mean that she was a Moabite by racial description. And Uriah, was he a Hittite by racial or you know, I live in Florida right now, so people would call me a Floridian. But if I move um, to Texas, I'd be called a Texan, right? But I was born in another state. I wasn't born in Florida. So, you know, and you get somebody from, for example, uh, Thailand, and they move to the United States and... They marry an American citizen and become a an American citizen. Uh, they're an American, right? But but their heritage is from Thailand. So, you know, when you read about you know Uriah the Hittite, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that he was racially a Hittite. But Uriah was one of David's soldiers, and he had a house next to the king's palace. And let me tell you something, you don't live next door to the king unless you're somebody important or you're a friend or something. I mean, let's face it, you know, you just don't move next door to the king. You know, they, you're, they're going to vet you and make sure that you're not a threat or you got to be a friend or somebody important, somebody that they trust. So evidently, Uriah was a pretty important person. Uh, his house was next door to the king's palace. And he had a wife, Bathsheba. 
bath Sheba, and she was taking a bath on the roof of the house. Well, David's up on the palace looking down on her, going, wow, she's a fox. She's pretty hot. So he conspired with his people to kill Uriah and take his wife. And uh, she got pregnant and, you know, the first child died. But then she got pregnant again and then that was the uh, successor to David. That was King Solomon. So, you know, the Lord was not pleased that David had done this. I mean, you know. And believe me, David already had at least two wives. I mean, it wasn't like he was starving or anything, if you catch my drift. I mean, he had a couple of wives. He had um, Nabal's wife, and he had married um, I think Saul's daughter. I'm not sure if Saul's daughter was defiled or not. I think she was. Saul had given her to another man to be her husband, so maybe that he if she was defiled, he couldn't touch her. I don't know. But but David had at least one wife that he had availability with. So I mean, it's not like you know he needed to steal another guy's wife. So here it is: the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to David to condemn him, and this is what he said. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And Nathan's a prophet. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank, drank of his own cup. So here it is, this little lamb drank of his own cup. And lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man, that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. So, in other words, the rich man didn't want to take a lamb of his flock. No, he went to the poor man that only had one and killed his flock, his, his lamb, and prepared it as a meal for the traveler. Okay? So, here it is. The rich man's got a, a whole herd. The poor man's only got one. So, what does David say about this? Verse 5, And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, see, this was all like a parable. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. You're the one. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel. And by the way, anointing was when they took olive oil, put it in a cup, and poured it on your head. And that was sort of a looking forward indicative of the Holy Spirit. So, he said, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of, of Saul. See, King Saul tried to kill David, right? And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have given 
unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with, with the sword of the children of Ammon. So Nathan the prophet is, he's giving it to David here. He's like, you know, Lord gave you, spared your life with King Saul, gave you the kingship, gave you the palace for the king, gave you Israel, gave you Judah, made you rich beyond your wildest dreams, and you even had wives. And what did you do? You killed your neighbor so that you could have his wife. So what does the Lord proclaim against uh, David? Verse 10. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son, for thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, and this is God's favorite words right here, and, God, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. See, only God can forgive sin. And if Jesus Christ was not God in the flesh, he could not forgive sin. Verse 14, How be it because, this, because by this deed Thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme Satan the accuser. Can you imagine Satan going up to God and saying, Look what your buddy David here did. He murdered Uriah and took his wife. Yeah, he's a real great uh, character here. How be it because by this deed... Thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And it did. The child died. So, the cup. The cup was used for anointing. The cup is for anointing people's heads for olive oil, for becoming a king or becoming a prophet. But the cup also, remember it said that, um, that the lamb drank from the master's cup? The little lamb, it ate of his meat and drank of his cup. Didn't we just read that? Oh yeah. All right, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 11. We're going to read the whole chapter. It's a small one. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may sh uh, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And that is very applicable today. The foundations of Christianity has been virtually destroyed by all these modern 
fake Bible versions. It is really sad. I tell you what, if I don't find a decent hosting place for all my audio sermons, I am probably going to abandon YouTube. It's getting to the point where I'm being censored. They don't even... I, people have told me that they're getting comments posted on their accounts that they didn't do. So... And I've noticed the people that used to follow my studies, I don't even hear from them anymore. So I, And people are telling me that they subscribe, they get unsubscribed, and then they check on me, and then they're like, I didn't unsubscribe, but I'm not getting notifications anymore. So I'm going to probably abandon YouTube very soon. So if anybody's got an idea of... Um, an audio hosting site that wouldn't censor, you know, let me know. But, um, yeah, with, with this, what's going on at, uh, with Vegas, I, I think they're going to pass more laws like they did after 9-11. So, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked in him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Hmm fire and brimstone. That's going to be the portion of their cup. Verse 7, For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance does behold the upright. Alright, let's go to Psalms chapter 16. Verse 1, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied, that hasten after another god. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. You know, this is a very interesting verse. I just noticed this. It says, Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. You know, back in the Old Testament days, without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. And basically, it was you know the Lord's temple. It was blood sacrifices. Well, after Christ came, that was paid in full. But the devil and his children still require blood sacrifice. You wonder why there's thousands and thousands of children that disappear every year? Yeah. There's a reason why the Lord commanded Satanists and witches and wizards to be put to death, not um, have Harry Potter movies. <laughs> All right, so, verse 5. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. My cup. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Hmm, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And that's Christ, right? 
Thou wilt show me the path of life in the presence of in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now, people don't know it, but um, all the Old Testament saints went to hell. They went to, um, there's three words translated as hell. One's the grave, and then there was Abraham's bosom. And if you don't understand that, read the, um, go check out my Abraham's bosom uh, Bible study. All the Old Testament saints went to Abraham's bosom, which was hell. It's in the book of Luke. But when Christ came, he went down in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, and then he was raised from the dead. And I believe all these people were raised with him, all the Old Testament saints. They were not suffering in the fire like the rich man was. Look at the parable. No, I'm sorry. It's not a parable. It's a story of the rich man and Lazarus. That's what I'm talking about. It's not a parable. Jesus called Lazarus by name. He didn't say it was a parable. It was a story. It's true. So, yeah, if anybody wants uh, uh, copies of all the audio studies I've done, shoot me an email. And if you get send me a 32 gigabyte USB drive, I'll make a copy and I'll mail it to you. You know, we'll figure something out. And then feel free to post them to other sites, you know, face, fake, fake book or whoever, I don't mind. Um, all the Bible studies I've done belong to the Lord. There's no copyright. So, all right. All right, let's go to Psalms chapter 23. Boy, this is, uh, I've read this a bunch of times. At, uh, when I used to do uh, volunteer work at the VA cemetery, South Florida Veterans Cemetery. So, volunteer. Yeah, just remember, you get what you pay for, right? A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Interesting. All right, let's go to Psalms chapter 75. We're going to read the entire one. Excuse me. Unto thee, O God, unto thee, O God, do we give thanks unto thee, unto thee do we give thanks for that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare when i shall receive the congregation i will judge uprightly the earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved isn't that interesting the earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved uh, little note here. Doesn't it say in the in uh, Peter's epistle that the earth is going to be dissolved? It's going to be melted with fervent heat. Oh yeah. And people say the Old Testament's not worth reading. Right. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. I say unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked lift up. Lift not up the horn. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. 
For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one, and setteth up another. For in the hand, for in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. Ooh. And this, this is, this is, uh, Revelation has a reference to this. And that's why people that don't bother to read the Old Testament, they say they don't understand the book of Revelation. Well, book of Revelation re draws all its symbolism from the Old Testament. So there's a reason why they don't understand it. Because you don't go to the last chapter of a novel and read it and think you're going to understand what's going on. No, you've got to start from the beginning of the novel. You've got to read page one. Verse 8, For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus compared wine to his blood, to blood. And the wine is red, it is full of mixture, and he poureth out the same, but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. Jacob is the uh, name that God gave. He changed his name to Israel. Jacob became Israel. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. All right, let's go to Psalms 116. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. That's sort of like your petition and prayers. Because he hath inclined his ears unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. <laughs> then I called upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, All men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation. I will take the cup of salvation. You didn't know there was salvation in a cup, did you? Uh, remember when Christ took the wine and said, Drink, this is my blood of the New Testament? Oh, yeah. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. Think about that, people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. All right, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 51. If there's one book that Jesus quoted more than any other book in the Bible, it was Isaiah. So when you hear these preachers tell you that the Old Testament's for the Jews and we, we shouldn't be reading it because it doesn't apply to us, tell them to go to hell. 
and I'm not being sarcastic. They're evil. They're either deceived by the Lord himself or they're deceivers. They really are. They're de children of the devil, I think. They either are children of the devil or they're following the devil. I don't know. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock. Look unto the rock, whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit, whence ye are digged. And I did a Bible study on the rock. The Bible clearly says the rock is Christ. But, P but Catholics don't believe that. They think Peter is the rock. No, Christ is the rock. Verse 2, Look unto Abraham your father, unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone. Ooh, but, but, the, but modern preachers say that God called the whole world. No. Look unto Abraham your father, unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. And there are evil preachers that want you to think that this is happening right now in the Zionist Antichrist Israeli state. I don't think so. I think it's when the Lord returns. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is here, my salvation has gone forth, and mine arms shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on my arms shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Hmm. Did you know the law is in a certain people's heart? Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and a worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generation of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Uh, Rahab was the harlot that was saved in one of the cities. She took the spies, Israel, spies of Israel, protected them, and let them escape. And then when they destroyed the city, she was spared. Uh, Art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea away for the ransom to pass over? Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come up with singing upon Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow, and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and the son of man which shall be made as grass? And forgetteth the Lord thy Maker, that hath stretched, stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hastened that he may be loosed and 
that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divideth the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Did you know the Lord has a cup of fury? Oh yeah. You're going to hear more about that on this Bible study. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling, a cup of trembling, and wrung them out. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? Desolation means nothing. And then they're going to have destruction. And then famine, lack of food. And then sword, that's war. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord the God, I'm sorry, thus saith thy Lord the Lord, and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. Even the dregs of the cup of my fury, thou shalt no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down that we may go over, and thou hast laid thy body as the ground, and as the street to them that went over. All right, turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16. Reading Jeremiah scares me. I don't know about you, but it kind of scares me. All right, chapter 16, verse 1. The word of the Lord came also unto me, saying, Thou shalt not take thee a wife, neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. Why? Well, we're going to find out. For thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place and concerning their mothers that bear them and concerning their fathers that begat them in this land. They shall die. They shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented. Neither shall they be buried. But they shall be as dung. You know what dung is? Uh, after a cow eats grass and then it comes out the other side and falls on the ground, that's dung. But they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. Think about this the next time you hear some preacher teaching the pre-trib rapture. Yeah, God did this to his chosen people, but he would never do this to Christians. But yet the Bible says that judgment begins at the house of God. Wow. Verse 5. For thus saith the Lord, Enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemoan them. For I have taken away my peace from this people, saith the Lord, even loving kindness and mercies. 
In other words, I've had it with these people. It's over. Verse 6, both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried. Neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make themselves bald for them. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in mourning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or for their mother. Thou shalt not also go into the house of feasting to sit with them to eat and to drink. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. Who's the bridegroom? Christ. Who's the bride? Israel. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. In other words, God is going to quit speaking to these people. And you're not going to hear the voice of the bride because she's going to be dead. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Then shalt thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. And ye have done worse than your fathers. For behold, ye walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. Therefore I will cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers, and there, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. What land is north of Israel? Europe. And from all the lands whither I have driven them, and I will bring them again into the land that I gave unto their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishers. Fishers. You know what fishers are? Those are fishermen. What was Peter? He was a fisherman. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. Didn't Jesus tell Peter, I will make you fishers of men? Oh yeah, he did. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. At first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double, because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable, detestable and abominable things. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the lands of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have an inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself? And they are no gods. Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know, I will cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. All right, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, 
for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. All right, uh, it's been 50 minutes. I think I'm going to make this part one. This might be a three-part study. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm going to make, end this now because uh, I've got more of Jeremiah, you know. And, and you can't understand the New Testament very well if you don't have a working knowledge of the Old Testament. It's very important. I don't care what the lying preachers say. So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, and that's Christ, who was slain before the foundation of the world. Stay close to Jesus, people. Things are going to get rough. In Jesus' precious name, amen.